Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. Time to look at activities that happened during the weekend. A lot of matches that was played in the Nigerian Professional Football League, the AFS League in Nigeria, not forgetting the second tier. That is the NNL, Nigeria National League. Matches were played across different stadia. So many matches, results, home draw, home win. A lot of matches we'll be looking at on the show. This hour, I am Adeni Ajishafe. Joining me to talk sport. Uh, this hour uh, is uh, uh, Ayeku Timothy. Good to have you, Timothy. Thank you for having me. Okay, now we look at uh, a lot of uh, stories breaking in the world of sport during the weekend, especially football. So many matches in Nigeria, uh, NNL, MPFL, and then we look at the European football. So many matches. Liverpool, they are champions. Uh, they won the EFL Cup and they are celebrating. Yeah. Let's, let's get the ball. Okay, good one there. We look at the first story. It has, to, it has to be from the Nigerian National League. Well, the second tier of Nigerian football league. A lot of matches were played. Let's look at the result as it unfolded over the weekend, starting from the Group A1, where uh, AFCC played goalless against FWC champions. ABS of Lorraine, they defeated Zamfara by four goals to nil. Jubilee Stars, uh, that's YDS, they won 2 1 against Sokoto United. City FC, they were loved there. Uh, Oya Sports 3 0 to win their game uh, in Abuja. El Kanemi Warriors, uh, they defeated Mighty Jot by a long goal. That's for Group A1. That's the uh, Northern Conference A1. In uh, Northern Conference A2, let's look at A2 result now. NAV, that Nigerian Air Force, they drew goalless against Kogi United. DMD defeated uh, Rose Safety by two goals to nil. You have Doma United losing against Chicago goal this time by one to two. JM Liberty, two nil against Adamawa United. Now let's take it two by two before we go to the other conference. Ayeko Timothy, you look at these uh, games that happen in the Northern Conference, both A1, A2. Uh, a team from Abuja, AFCC, uh, at, at least they played their match against the FWC yeah. goalless. Uh, very interesting game. Um, fortunately, I was there. Uh, I witnessed the game, and uh, from what I learned, uh, it's a game between two rivals. Uh, both teams, uh, you know, have been having these fights, even in the FA Cup and in friendly games. Although FWS Champions FC is a new team in the league, they are newcomers, but then they've been able to prove a level of might against uh, EFCC that has been there. So it's a rivalry game, and that game ended in a very, you know, tense atmosphere. Uh, there was a little, you know, uh, uh, decision that was expected to be made by the referee, and the referee didn't. They expected a penalty to be <coughs> awarded, I think, about two minutes to the end of the game, and then the referee said, no, it's not, let's continue. So it caused a little argument, and, you know, but very good game between the two sides, and uh, the the... NNL is now showing to be uh, the most important league in Nigeria, as, as has been said. Mm -hmm. You know, because in the second uh, week, we got, uh, I think, two away uh, points. The away teams going to, you know, home, uh, going away to get points, you know, away from their homes. And then we've been having, uh, you know, a level of, you know, closeness, teams closing gaps between teams that are, you know, <coughs> higher than them. So we're we are, we are having it good. Third week, uh, so we are hoping that we'll get more actions uh, and more drama in the fourth week. Well, we've been talking concerning the Nigeria National League as it went down just uh, different stadia in Nigeria. Uh, looking at the Northern Conference, uh, Northern Conference Group A1 and B2 there, where EFCC play goalless against FWC champions there. Well, let's go to the Southern Conference and look at the results that happened in the Nigerian National League. Southern Conference B1, Ikorodu City, they play one old draw against Bende Insurance, the high flying Bende Insurance. That's the only team that fly, <laughs> they fly around. Uh, those State government doing well. They are flying their players everywhere they want to go and play. They took them to Lagos and they, they went there. They saw they almost conquered, but they played draw. One of draw there. Gateway United picked Van Dressa by a long goal. Another very organized team, Van Dressa United there. Oshi United also picked Giant Brillas by one nil. I still don't understand how Giant Brillas could not defeat <laughs> Oshi United. Jaya Tete against Ebom Youth ended one of draw there. Looking at the Group B1 conference result. 
result. And now let's look at B2 as we also went down in Nigeria. B2 result, FC1 Rocket. With their rocket, they play uh, one of Dragon's Crown FC. Otasolo, Otasolo versus Ijebu United in favor of Ijebu United, who won 1 0 in that game. In Newe, uh, over there in the city of Newe, they, they were able to do well against uh, Rovers of Calabar. They won 2 1 in that game. And Go Round FC, Go Round FC was able to come. Uh, they went round and they won 2 1 against the show of all eyes. Looking at group, uh, Southern B1 and B2 conferences. Now, those are the results as it went down. But I'll pick a match there. That Van Dressa versus Gateway ended in favor of Gateway. Although we know how organized Van Dressa FC is, yes. but uh, they could not. They could could not get it against Gateway United. You know, Vendreza is a team that uh, everyone is looking up to because of the level of organization. They've put up a standard that, uh, you know, we hope that every other club will emulate. They are a private-owned uh, club, not a government side. And so they are doing one or two things in terms of media, the packaging of the club, and all of that to ensure that, you know, we make our league a brand. And you see, we are, what we just expect is to see them, you know, have it reflect on the pitch mm. of play. That is, you are doing well off the pitch, so let's get some results. But overall, they are doing well, and we hope to uh, see them in the Premier League. And if you, look at, if you look at the NNL, uh, a lot of teams are, are at least uh, got relegated. Uh, a lot of big teams are there. By outside United, yes. uh, Worry Wolves, Worry Wolves, they are all there. Gateway, they have experience. They've been in NPFL, they've tested it, mm. and now play in the NNL. Uh, the, the new teams are not relenting on their offer to at least fight against all these experienced uh, teams. Mm, but of course, the experienced teams still have the advantage. They have the edge because they've been there. They know what it takes. Uh, they know what the fight is all about. Uh, just like what happened last year, last season, we saw um, the Niger Tornadoes uh, coming back from the NNL to the MPFL. Uh, we saw also Gombe. You know, coming back also. So they were able to prove the point that, yes, we are big guys, and so we can withstand the pressure, we can defeat everyone that comes our way. Mm. So I think that should also play out, except if, of course, football, you never say never. Never say never in the world of football. Coming from Timothy Ayeku there. Well, let's look at the MPFL. Matches were also played. And quickly, let's look at how it went down across different centers in Nigeria. As we start with the result from the MPFL, Atlan, surprisingly, they defeated Ayimba International in Owere there. Good one for Atlan, a team that really struggled this season. Remo Stars back to winning ways. They won against Katina United, while Lobby Stars lost away to Dakada in Uyo 2 1. Plateau United. United, defeated Aqua United by two goals to one. Good one for Fidelis Electrico and his lads. Abia Warriors goalless against shooting stars. Of, uh, you see these games, you'll be wondering how come uh, this match is the way it was being played. You have uh, Enugu Rangers against Kano Pillars. Uh, well, for Enugu Rangers, they defeated Kano Pillars. Kano Pillars, uh, they, really, they are not really getting it right at all. Uh, well, Nasarawa United, they were pipped by Rivers United by Longo. Kwara United also pipped uh, Niger Tornados by Longo. Go. Coach Abdullah Bifo saying was really uh, very unsettled in that game against Niger Tornados in the Loring. MFM of Lagos, good one for them. They are bouncing back. They won 3 0 against Sunshine Stars of Akure in the Southwestern Derby. Wiki Torres of Bauchi, Kabiru Dogo and his boys defeated Gombe United by a long goal. Those are the results that went down over the weekend. Most of the home teams won their games. Mm. Now, this has been an argument in uh, Nigerian football. People who don't go to the stadium to watch the game, mm. they will tell you, why are we having home teams win all the time? And the truth is there are a lot of factors that play out, you know, in this uh, uh, thing. The first thing is, it's difficult to get your fans to travel with you to give you that support because fans are also part of the game. So because of the Nigerian factor and all of that, you get a situation whereby the home team just have the support and then the left and the away team are left to their own face to just play on the pitch and all of that. Mm. Unfortunately, we didn't get uh, any away win in the MPFL, but I think some teams are actually doing well. We'll give it to Remo Stars. I'm surprised they are doing what they are doing, although they are not at the top. But then they've showed that, you know, we can come and stay. Ilechuku is also doing well with play too. He has mm -hmm. left MFM and I think MFM are suffering now. Uh, but uh, Rivers United are proving, okay, I think it's our time. Aqua did it, we can also do it. So let's see how it turns out. 
Well, we've been talking MPFL there. Now, let's connect to Amechi Agbo in Lagos, who will be telling us how we actually saw those games during the weekend. Amechi Agbo, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Okay, now, well, matches were played over the weekend. Amechi, I'm sure the one from uh, Heartland versus Eimba got a lot of people surprised where uh, Coach Vinidi George was really unhappy concerning the referee that referred the game. Although it ended in favor of uh, Heartland, they won one nil in that particular encounter. A serious W for the, for the two teams. And um, I was really surprised that Heartland uh, pulled the a win against any but also I wasn't disappointed because um, facing uh, a lot of troubles, particularly financially. The team appeared to be and uh, the results on the field of play translate to what is happening behind or of play. So the Heartland also is coming out from a turbulent moment to most of them played a, a title and rest of them. Culminating to the departure of, uh, what's the name of the coach, Hassan Abdallah, a few weeks ago, and also uh, came me to study the fish, and he has been doing a great job. Five matches under him, no loss, gone on beating, three draws, and uh, two, two, uh, two victories right now. So that yesterday match, of course, was a huge test for Hapland to make statements, and he did that. But it came under controversial circumstances anyway. And if you recall, um, prior to that match, the last time uh, any ball won uh, Hapland was uh, 2018. So between then and now, four matches they have played, Hapland uh, won two, and the other two had ended in installment. So yesterday, anyone wanted to make a statement to bounce back from um, this performance so far in the league. And then Heartland needed to consolidate. So at the end of the day, Heartland won that match, but it came under stress controversy, culminating to the coach of Enyemba threatening to, to league if the officiating, according to him, bad officiating continues to thrive in the league. So, but then it's a great to anybody. To be threatening to uh, uh, quit uh, football just because of uh, that uh, referee uh, not doing what no, no. he actually expected him to do. How would you take that? Well, Hello, Amici, are you there? He threatened to quit the MPFL and uh, the fact that it's not just about the in Yimba March on Saturday, but the fact that uh, all around the league there have been pockets of uh, controversies, uh, issues uh, particularly relating to officiating, which he is not confident. And then he, he also challenged the journalists to write uh, what they see in the field. So it is a um, challenge. Finidi is seriously on that in measure of in any about to deliver. If you recall, he started very well playing half Champions League, uh, two matches, two, three MPFL matches, going on beating for about four, five, six matches. But all of a sudden, there was a crack. Since any but half Champions uh, Confederation Cup match that was cancelled because they couldn't meet up with uh, COVID 19 issues and traveling logistics, uh, any has been on the downward spiral. Uh, uh, turn since then. It has not been easy for them, and the coach is under pressure, so it's understandable his frustration. Oh, okay. Well, we just have to understand his frustration. Aim by international and losing the games Heartland there. And well, look at Remonstras are back to winning ways and Plateau United, the one their game. Seems uh, coach Fidelis Ilechuku is really getting the magic wand round, uh, twisting Plateau United to the top. It was said that uh, Heartland. Uh, a lot did all the did uh, particularly negatively that made uh, Fidelis eligible to leave uh, uh, Haplanders at the, last, at the end of last season. Uh, you recall how eligible transformed MFM about four, five, six, seven years he was with the club. He took them from the NNL league, and uh, I think uh, either two or three occasions 
the second of the league. They, they, they miss winning league about four seasons ago just by a whisker. And the uh, Heartland was a terrible situation there. He made the team to the uh, uh, league thirty for at the end of last season. Now he has gone to Plateau United. I am not surprised about his, what he's doing there. Uh, if Kerr is not taking Plateau is going to win that league again this if other teams uh, do not rise up to the occasion. So Fidel is a good group for him. Uh, for Remo Stars, I think um, they, they went into a hiatus after they, they, they lost their unbeaten run. Uh, it, it was mentally, they will be affected psychologically as well, but they are gradually beginning to, to pick up from where they, they left. Among the, the newcomers to the league, I think uh, Remo Stars have been in. The, uh, the most surprising team so far coming from Amechi Agbode. Amechi Agbode, while you are still with us, let's uh, hear from uh, uh, Timothy Ayeko. You just heard what he said, that uh, uh, Raymond Star seems to be the shocking team so far this season. He has talked about Fidelity Lechuku and also other uh, story concerning Finiti George. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Amechi, you are doing a good job there in uh, Lagos. I, I think I've met uh, Lechuku once uh, when he was doing his uh, calf. I think I've been a BOC course here in Abuja, and uh, I saw a very vibrant man, a young man, and I, I recall then he told me, uh, you are too young to be the media officer of a football club. <laughs> I said, coach, you're also too young to be you know, the <laughs> coach of a, a, a Premier a League side, mm. and all of that. He's a vibrant coach who understands the job. He wants to do it. He's still young. Uh, the pressure of you know, other factors outside the game is not on him as it were. You know, expected, and so we expect him to, you know, fly. And we should give him all the support because he's a young man, and he, he represents a generation of people that we want, uh, you know, them to do the game. But for um, officiating of, uh, you know, our football in Nigeria, this has been a controversial issue that I think we'll keep talking about it if we don't do the right thing. The referees just uh, have to be checked. You know, we just have to do the right thing. You see, these of these referees are people who, you know, they hold the game in their hands because. The way the officiating goes will determine, you know, what, how the game will look like and what the result will be. And I discovered that most of these referees are not, you know, they do this job for, you know, a full-time stuff. I think it's wrong. A referee should have, you know, other jobs, you know. So nobody will come and give you 50,000 naira, 100,000 or 200,000 to, you know, kill you know, the efforts of players on the pitch. And that has to be checked by the league body and the referee association. We need to ensure that we get it right. Our football, yes, we are not perfect. Even with the VR issue uh, in place in Europe, we still have controversies and all of that. But it has to improve. This has been, in short, in the NNL, people are talking about it. In the NLO, it's still the same issue. So the referees must be checked. And you should, they, they have to ensure that the integrity of the game is placed higher than any other uh, uh, factor. Hmm. Well, we've been talking concerning the referees in Nigerian League. Amechi Agbo joining us from Lagos. Amechi Agbo, if you are there now, let's look at the issue of uh, uh, referees. Uh, coaches complaining almost every week about uh, referee. And I remember before the league started, where the uh, Nigerian referee, National Referee uh, Association president, uh, where it was talked to them that they will make sure they put the best there best referees and whoever is found one team will be booted out but the way it is right now it's as if the whole uh, uh giant uh, killing style of uh, uh, not referring well has come back has actually crept back stylishly to our football well uh, for most, before i go into that uh, line of thought uh, let me commend that uh, timothy he's a friend he's a brother i think he's one of the young guys of a club, but he's in charge of uh, FWC champions. However, they've not been doing exceptional in NL, but it's just the beginning of the league, they're going to pick up their ass together and then they begin to fly as the champions they are. Timothy, good morning. So, the issue of referee in the country, there are factors that need to be put into play. I understand that home teams take responsibility for officials logistics. For instance, accommodation, transportation, feeding. This jeopardizes the rule of independence in the field of play. 
The mentality is, I cannot do this for you. I cannot provide the best group for your accommodation, the best transportation network, and rest of them. And you come to the march and you mess me up. This is when we are having the uh, win at home syndrome mechanism in the the NRA, which is under the Nigeria Referees Appointment Committee and of the NFL, is responsible for appointment of referees for all league matches in the country. But who takes responsibility for the logistics indemnities of these officials? This is where the issues are. So there should be an independent body responsible for the payment of whatever entitlement to the coaches, accommodation whatsoever, so that the coach will go in the, within an independent mind, not under any material motive to pay for any team. If we continue to, to work in this system, we continue to have the same result. And this is why coaches complain about officiating, most particularly when score results uh, a, a club. We should not also forget that some coaches are mysterious. But most times we see these things in the field of play. The match against uh, Rangers and uh, uh, Rangers uh, last week, I think, a goal was scored from a rebound. It was it, it is true. In a match the wicked stories of Bouchy and Rangers previously before that match against uh, Rivers, Rangers scored a goal from a rebound. It was ruled offside. So what are we saying? If you go to Team A and say this one, you go to Team A, the same scenario, you say it is not good. So what message, message are we passing across? Officiating is the bed, is the bedrock of every league and football. And the referee, though we cannot get it 100%, human effort is 100% perfect, but we can get 78, 79, records of good officiating, and the league will be good to go. I would like to state this thing, and then uh, LMCD to bear it in mind, that at the all league activities is the center referee. He, 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 he can have a free kick that was not become a goal. But what thereafter? How much effort are being made to sanitize these uh, referees? How much and entitlements are they being paid? What effort what is putting in place to checkmate the uh, clubs influencing match officials instead of matches? If all the clubs know the rule of how to cheat, but what is MPL LMC doing? Uh, uh, last week they they came out with um, sanctions for Platinum United, Lopez, uh, Abia Warriors and the rest of them. When sanctions, they do not tell us that this club actually paid these sanctions. How they paid it? Most times, this is made it and the club gets away with a lot of issues. Our time is fast running out. We really appreciate your time talking about Nigeria referee there. Uh, the MPFL matches, a lot of matches, people are complaining concerning how those games were being officiated and it's not really going well at all. I made sure I go from Lagos. Special thanks to you there. Thank you very much for joining us from Lagos. We want to appreciate your time. And uh, Ayeku Timothy, because our time is uh, fast uh, spent now, just uh, briefly, uh, concerning the MPFL, that's what we are looking at mostly. Even the NNL, the NLO, officiating Nigerian football has really been very, very poor. And uh, we just saw that it gets better. How do you say this, briefly? Uh, truly, um, the referee indemnity should be handled by the league body. They should be responsible for that. And so that they will not be able to bribe just the that's just the point. Mm -hmm. Because you have access to the referee before the game. Because you have to provide uh, the accommodation, you have to provide food and all of that. So some discussions could you know, happen. So referees should not be given access to the teams before the game. Let's miss on the pitch because that's where the business is. Mm -hmm. That's how it should be. The league body should be responsible for referee indemnity, everything that concerns the referee, transportation and all of that. So that will get this problem at least reduced. 
Well, we just hope that this will be done concerning the MPF before we go. Just a glimpse at the table as it stands right now. Well, Rivers United, Plateau United, Rangers, all the team are backed up there. Rivers are topping with 32 points. Plateau are second with 31 points. And you have Remo Stars are back to the third position. Rangers International with 12, 24 points. You have Quara United, Aqua United, Wiki Torres in seventh. Aimba in eighth, despite that loss against Heartland. You have Sunshine Stars of Akure in ninth position. Gombe 10. And Nasarawa are standing 11 after losing that game away. Shooting stars of Ibad on 12, Lobby stars Canopy last 13 and 14. And if you go down the bottom of the table, Hatland are now 17 on the log, 18 is Dakada, Katsina United, and 19 and MFM of Lagos. Well, despite winning, they are still wallowing in the bottom at the bottom of the table. Rather, well, that's just the way the table is standing because our time is gone. We just have to appreciate the fact that, well, Amisha Bojona from Lagos and Timothy Aye who has been doing your man's job in the studio. Timothy, thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Well, it's always a business when it comes to sport. Never on that uh, sport at all. It's always there to employ a lot of people, give joy to lots of uh, worldwide uh, <laughs> lovers of sport. They forget their sorrows whenever sport is on. That's why sport is a unifying factor. That's it on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Ajishafe. Thanks for watching. Well.